day in Montana normally wouldn't be a big deal, but a candidate has something new to add to his resume tonight. How about a misdemeanor assault charge? But will it hurt his chances of winning? We really don't know. Republican candidate Greg Gianforte has remained silent since the incident last night. You may have seen this on social media. During a campaign event, Gianforte allegedly body slammed a reporter for The Guardian, his name, Ben Jacobs, as he was trying to ask a question about the Republican health care plan. Jacobs was recording the encounter. Take a listen. We'll talk to you about that later. Yeah, but there's not going to be time. I'm just curious if you okay, have speak with right Shane, now. please. But you don't Sick and tired of you guys. The last time you came quick. here, you did the same thing. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Now, reporter Jacobs took a, a picture inside an ambulance after the alleged attack. He's on top of me for a second. My glasses are broken. It's the strangest, the strangest moment in my entire life reporting. Now, the campaign says the reporter is the one who showed aggressive behavior, a claim refuted by three members of a Fox News team who witnessed the entire incident. Democrats and Republicans have criticized the politicians' actions. Gianforte have been favored to win election, and a large number of absentee ballots have already been cast before the alleged assault. Dan Shelley is the incoming executive director of the Radio Television Digital News Association, or the RTDNA. He joins us now by phone from New York City. And Mr. Shelley, just tell us, what do you make of all this? Well, I would like to say I was surprised and even shocked when I heard the news coming out of Montana about this alleged assault last night. But given the increasing, uh, and it's increasing at an alarming rate, the increasing vitriol across the country against the news media, uh, I was not surprised or shocked. Outraged, yes, but surprised, no. Republican Congressman Duncan Hunter of California said, and this is a quote, it's not appropriate behavior. He's talking about the congressman. I'm sorry, the candidate. He says it's not appropriate behavior unless the reporter deserved it. What do you make of that? That's coming from well, a Congress member. Yeah, that, that, that's frightening in and of itself. And it, and it uh, speaks to the rising level of vitriol that, that, that really uh, emanates not just from the White House, but from elected and public officials all over the country at the national and local level. Uh, it's, it's really... Uh, uh, it saddens me to hear that uh, a sitting member of Congress would say, unless he deserved it. Uh, there are no independent witness accounts from the event last night in Montana that support any remote notion that Ben Jacobs deserved what he got. Now, I heard some, some people, uh, uh, you know, Donald Trump uh, uh, associates say, look, don't put this on the president. Uh, what about personal accountability? Uh, how do you respond to that? Is that is that not fair? Well, attacks on the First Amendment and increasing vitriol against the news media are not a partisan political issue. They've been simmering under the surface for many, many, many years. They've just been exacerbated and been fueled to a degree by the enhanced anti-media rhetoric that started during the 2016 campaign and continues today, uh, you know, a few months into the Trump administration. One more question. What, what, what's your advice? Uh, what do you say, especially to the young reporters out there? Keep doing what you're doing. The only and the best response to anti-media attacks is to do more journalism and to do more journalism responsibly. Whatever you do, don't give up. Dan Shelley, um, I, I, I totally agree. And thanks a lot for your time. Absolutely. Let's underscore that to the young journalists. Keep doing your jobs. Coming up next. Lots